Hi everyone, in this part we're going to change our AI's chasing behaviour so that it will either go to the player if it can see them, or to the player's last known location if it can't see them. If it does that, it will well, go to the last known location, wait for five seconds, and then go back to patrolling it. And we'll expand on that behaviour in the next section. So what do we need first of all? Well, we need a couple more Blackboard keys. So I'm going to go to my behaviour tree, go across to Blackboard. I'm going to add a Boolean key, so one that can be true or false only. I'm going to call that can see player question mark. That's going to be simple, true or false, can you see the player? We need another one, a key of type vector. Vectors we can use to represent locations in the world, you know, locations in X, Y, Z space. And we're going to call that vector key player, oops, player last known location or last known position. No. Position. Don't ask me why I put spaces in some variable names and not others. I don't know, just force of habit. So we've got two new keys, can see player and player last known position. Where are we going to set these? Well, we're already working out, can you see the player or not, aren't we, in that service that we made. Do you remember? We go back to the behavior tree, double click this BTS check see player to open it. We were asking down here, can you see the player? And we actually act on the true or false variable. So before we do that true or false, that branch, Let's just store the result of this contains check into that new Blackboard key. So we need a new Blackboard key selector. We go add variable, call it BB key. Um, can see player, I guess. Good name as any. Um, it's already of type. It's already of type Blackboard key selector because that's the last thing I added. We'll make it instance editable like that. Drag it in. Go get BB key. Whatever. Set Blackboard key as Boolean this time, and we're just wiring in that value. And just place that in like this. So every time this service runs now, it's going to be setting that Blackboard key to true or false, depending on whether the AI can see the player or not. I'm just going to move these nodes back a bit just to tidy. It doesn't really matter. Now, what about that other one that we just made, the other Blackboard key, the vector, player's last known location? Well, what we'll say about that is, if you can see the player, true, you, know, you set your state to chasing, you set the target to the player, and then we'll set the, that vector to player's last known location, which means if we suddenly lose sight of the player, that vector will still be set to whatever location the player was at the last time they were seen. Uh, so guess what? We need another, um, another Blackboard key selector. We'll call this BB key player last known pause. Make that instance editable, drag that in, do a get, and then that's going to be a set blackboard value as a vector, like that. And it's going to be the XYZ coordinates of the player that we want in there. Now we've got a get player character already back here, so we can just drag off that and do a get actor location and plug that in there. Perfect. So now what happens is like at any given run of this service that we can see the player will be storing their location in that vector with the effect being that when we lose sight of them that will be the last the last known place that we saw them. And we're going to change things here. I'm going to disconnect this false branch. Now a word about that. One way to do this is to organize all this stuff is to have this service acting entirely as what's called a state machine. So all of the state changes and stuff are handled entirely in here and nowhere else in the behavior tree. No, I'm deliberately choosing not to do it that way, just so I can show you a little bit more about how behavior trees work. I know we can have selectors within sequences and more complex decision making. But yeah, just so you know, some people will insist that all of the state changing stuff should be in here. Yeah, I get that. I'm just deliberately doing it a different way. Well, let's hit compile there. We need a new behavior tree task that can change the state of our AI. Well, why is that? Well, we want it so that at some point, if we're in the chasing state, if we lose sight of the player, we go to where they were, wait for five seconds, and then we want a task which can put us back into the patrolling state. Now I've looked through, it seems like there should be a built-in task just for changing um, behavior tree keys. I can't see it. If I'm just being blind, I apologize, but we're going to write our own task to do that anyway. So we'll make a new task, and we're going to call this new task where, where it is now. We have the default name there, BT task blueprint base new. Let's rename that to BTT set state. And all set state needs to do is just change the state key on the blackboard to whatever we want it to be. 
We're going to start off as usual with the event receive tick AI. There we go. And what are we going to need to do here? We need a blackboard key selector to represent the state key. New variable BB key state. Change that to be of type blackboard key selector and make it instance editable. Then we're dragging that in. We're going set state as enum. Remember, state is an enumerator or enumeration. And then what do we want to set it to? Well, we want to be able to set that to whatever state we choose, don't we? So if we make a new variable called something like new state, we'll set that to be of type um, our enemy state enum. So enemy state, there it is. Make that instance editable. Then we can just wire that in to there. And that should be all we need. And then just the finish execute with success. Finish execute and tick the success. So when you look at this on the behavior tree, we'll get to say, what's, what key is it that refers to state? And then what do you want to change it to? Compile, save there. I think that's all. It's a very simple task, isn't it? That's really all that needs to be, though. All right, now we're ready to just change the logic in the behavior tree itself. We've got all of our tasks set up. Save everything. All right, so first of all, let's just hold Alt and click on these wires to break them and just move them out of the way a second. So that's the behavior we did have. Just go right for the player. And then what we're going to do here, we're going to change our chasing sequence to be a selector instead. Remember I said selectors will choose one of their child branches to run and only one of them. So we're going to have a selector and then two child sequences for can see player and can't see player. Now what I'm going to do to get that going is just make a new um, selector and just drag that chasing decorator onto it and then we can delete the sequence. Right, so now we've got a selector. Then underneath that selector, we want two sequences. So new sequence and new sequence. And we're going to put the Blackboard base condition on this. Whether you know whether this um, let's just go back and have a look. Whether this can see player is set to true or not, or whether it is set or not. So for this sequence, left click, add decorator, Blackboard. The blackboard base condition there is going to be um, can see player is set, which will be if can see player is true, and we'll rename that to can can see player. And what that's going to do is just the tasks from before: go to this speed, go to where the player is. Okay. Then this next one. Now you might think we don't need to put the decorator on here because surely if a selector can only run one of its child branches. If it fails to run this one, it's going to run this one, or at least try to. But the problem is, do you remember that our um, decorators have this observer abort thing? And we can say, if something changes, like if can see player is true, run all this. But then if it becomes false, abort mission. We need the same capability over here. So we want to add the decorator again. So decorator blackboard. This one will be if can see player is not set, meaning if it's false. And we'll just change that to can't see player for its name. All right, so what it means is if we can't see the player and we're running whatever tasks we're about to put down here, and then all of a sudden we can see the player, this will be able to abort mission, or at least it will if we remember to go abort self, and then we can go back to the task for can't see player. All right, so what are the tasks when you can't see the player? Well, first of all, we're going to do a move to on the player's last known location. Uh, and we'll go put that move to player last known position. Then when you get there, we're going to say wait for five seconds. So next task, wait for five seconds. It defaults to five seconds. You can change that if you want to. Then when you've done that, we're going to need our new set state task, BTT set state, and just say set your state back to patrolling. You see here. Blackboard key state is not set to the right one. That needs to be the state key. And then what are we setting it to? Patrolling. Um, might be tempted to rearrange this just to make it a little tidier. It doesn't actually matter as far as how things work, but I think I'll be happier if that's down there. And then these two have got more space just to... Yeah, like that. But yeah, you arrange yours however you want, as long as it's all wired up the same way. Right, let's see if this works, shall we? Um, hit play. So our AI should be patrolling. We should see him walking along. There he goes to his patrol routes. 
then if he sees me, he... Hmm, we are not giving chase. Okay, so what have I not done? All right, got it. What it doesn't like here, and this is an easy mistake to make. I left it in the video just because if you make this mistake, here's how you fix it. It's a very common thing to do. Um, when we added those two new Blackboard keys selectors to the service, can see player and player last known position, I never then selected the service and set those keys to what they're, at least the keys to what they're supposed to be. So BB can see player is still defaulted to self actor. That's supposed to be can see player. And BB key player last known position is, still, is defaulting to self actor. That's meant to be player last known position. I thought I'd leave that mistake in rather than re-record the section because it's a very common thing to do. So if something like this happens to you, just check that you've set your Blackboard key selectors to the right thing. All right. Uh, take two then. Let's try again, shall we? We hit play. Our guy should be patrolling. Yep, we can see him going down there coming this way, then if he sees me, he starts chasing. If he loses sight of me, it will go to the last known position, wait for five seconds, and then should go back to his patrolling behavior. There we go. But if during that time he sees me, he will jump straight back into the chasing. So that's a little bit better for us. Um, and there you go, you got me. All right, so in the last part, the next part, which will be the final part of this very simple series, we're going to um, take the behavior tree and just sort out this searching state. What do we want it to do when it's searching for the player? Okay, that's what we'll do next.